Okay, I'm going to go over the small group meetings now. Um, and one thing I want to really emphasize here is these can be very, very flexible. They don't have to be the same each, each from week to week. And let me give you an example. So let's say you're doing um, crafts and you've got 15 kids in your class and five of them want to do chain mail and 10 want to do leather craft. Um, that's great. You don't have to do it all together every week. In fact, you may meet together every week and you talk about macrame all together, but they're doing separately on their own. Um, they're doing chain mail and leather craft. Or maybe one of them's carving a lightsaber, or maybe one of them's carving their own bows and stuff. We've had some kids in the community do that. So those are things that are all okay. If everybody does stuff together, that's great. We've got kids that are hiking together for physical fitness. We've got kids that are working on trying to do backflips and gainers and stuff like that on their own. And then they're doing together, they're doing something else. Um, we've got groups of kids meeting together to go to Temple Open House and Payson and things like that together, but they may be doing something totally different for their goals. That's fine. The, the, the main thing is we want to make sure that they're getting, they're focusing during that month on getting their award um, and in working towards something. So small group meetings work like this. Opening exercises, basically that's going to be prayers, um, your creeds, and a spotlight or something like that. So let me go over each, each of those Quickly, prayer is its something. I, if you don't know how to pray, you shouldn't be listening. Next thing, you know, you can choose if you want. You don't have to, but um, you can do a ceremony or a ritual. For instance, Boy Scouts always, they, they put up a flag or they do a little flag ceremony. If you don't want to do that because you're communist, that's okay. You know, it doesn't have to be part of the program, but if you want to do it, you can. Um, so that's kind of an optional thing, and there could be any number of stuff, any, any number of things you could do that. I mean, um, commonly on a baseball or football team, you know, they kind of get together and they get in the middle and the go team and, you know, they put their hands together and that, stuff like that. You want to do something like that with your kids that's fun for that age group, great, go for it. It's not required. Um, creeds are required. We want you to do the creeds. Um, the creeds are at the top of each unit in the, in the handbook. And I want to go over a couple as examples why they're here. So the Boy Scouts does stuff like this. They do creeds um, and they can be either really boring or they can be very powerful and empowering. Um, Tony Robbins does, and he he's he's uh, he's done life coaching for people like Bill Clinton and Nelson Mandela, world champions, gold medalists, um, famous singers, and so forth. When people feel like they've achieved what they can achieve and they want to do more, but they don't know how to get there, he's the guy that they hire to do it. He's very famous, does lots of cool stuff. And one of the things he does is he has you do little mantras to yourself. You, you repeat something to yourself. You teach yourself something, kind of convince your brain, brainwash yourself, if you will, that something that you're doing is important or that, you know, to kind of get yourself psyched up for it. Uh, there's a lot more to what he teaches, but that's, that's how it applies really to the creeds. So instant, for instance, one of the creeds we say, to, what does water do at 211 degrees? The answer is, it gets hot. What does water do when it hits 212 degrees? We say, it creates steam that can power engines. Now, the, the lesson there is not just to memorize the creeds. So you say, okay, what, is, what happens with water at 211 degrees? It gets hot. Boring, right? There's nothing there. But, it, but if you teach the principle behind it, you give a quick spiritual lesson afterwards, that creed is very simple, it's easy to remember, and it teaches a powerful lesson. I've got a whole book on it. It's called 212 Degrees. And the whole purpose of the book is just to talk about how a little bit more effort can produce an amazingly different result. If water's at 211, there's no power in it. It doesn't do anything. It's only hot. You heat it one degree more, theoretically, to peace speaking, I realize there are elevation issues here, but theoretically <laughs> speaking, you add that one degree more, and now you've got steam, now you can create a boat that's powered. You can create a steam engine that makes a train move or whatever. It's a powerful thing. And a lot of kids need that kind of encouragement, that small little bit of information that comes in the creed can literally make a change and make them say, I'm going to just try harder, and they can accomplish something and change their life. So the creeds are meant to be empowering. They're meant to be a big deal. Um, if you look at each of the creeds in, all at once, instead of going month to month, you'll notice that most of them also have a focus of why do we develop our talents? To glorify God by something. That's how most of the creeds end, or for the, for the unit-specific creeds, they start by that because we want the kids to, to focus on and realizing we're not just doing these things for fun. 
we're not just doing these things because you've got to do that because otherwise you don't advance in your rank. We're doing these things to glorify God and just have a really strong focus that way. Um, also, we want to teach other empowering principles. For instance, to say, why do we set goals? So that we can accomplish more than if we didn't set goals. That's an important thing for a leadership-based um, program to teach the kids. If they think setting goals is just that's what you do for the program, they're missing out. And if we tell them, why do we set goals? So we can accomplish them. That's going to be disempowering. We don't, like 70% of people who set goals achieve a certain portion of the goal, but not all of it. And if you have percentages like that and you're teaching kids, why do we set goals? So we can accomplish them. 30% of your kids are going to feel like failures every month. But statistics will show that if you set goals, even if you don't accomplish them, you will statistically accomplish more than if you didn't set any goals at all. And if they're written, and if they're specific, the chances of achieving your goals goes up even higher. And Tony Robbins, by the way, has some really good principles on how to make sure that you achieve even more. So that's one of the creeds, and it's, it's an important principle. And we want our kids to not just memorize it. We want you teachers to help them understand the significance of those creeds. Uh, another goal is why do we keep track of goals? Well, the kids feel like, especially 18, 19 year olds, if you just tell them, they can't get those two creeds straight. They get them backwards. They don't know which is which or why it's important. Keeping track of your goals, that's why we've got charts for some of the goals. That's why we have goal sections at the end of your, um, at the end of each unit in the handbook is so that they can keep track of their goals. If that's not done, statistically speaking, you will have a slower rate of improvement than if you do that. So the answer is, why do we keep track of our goals? So we can accomplish even more. And the principle there is to say that if you keep track and on a daily or weekly or monthly basis of what is your goal and what are you accomplishing, when you keep track of it like that, you accomplish way more than if you just do it and it's a, a, some goal that's in your mind but you're not keeping track of it, you will accomplish less. And if you keep track of it, the rate of improvement will increase. So if you're accomplishing regularly goals and you're improving this much, that's great. You're accomplishing more than 80% of people in the world. That's wonderful. But if you're keeping track of your goals, it's exponential and studies have shown it'll just, you'll just, the rate of your improvement will continue to increase until you accomplish more than I think it's something like 98% of people in the world just by keeping track of your goals. So that's an important principle that we want to teach the kids. So the creeds as part of your small group meetings are really important. Don't skip them. Don't ignore them. Um, and with, as, as with anything else in this program, if you're uncomfortable with something, you're not really understanding why it's important, instead of not doing it, talk to somebody who knows about it, why we're doing it. We're glad to share that with you and explain it to you. We want the kids to have a uniform experience. We want them to be flexible in some ways, and we've talked about some ways that we can be flexible. But in other ways, we want a uniform experience. We want to develop a culture, a youth revolution culture, where the kids know what to expect when they come to the group meetings. They know what to expect. Um, in their classes, and it's pretty similar all the way through, so that they feel like it's the same program, and it's not just a, oh, this is this teacher, and this is this teacher, and this is this teacher, and somehow they're all correlated. We want it to be very strong cultural um, dynamic that we're creating a leadership, transformational leadership culture. That's what we're looking for. Okay, business, that's standard. I mean, any, any group is going to do that. You're going to have announcements, things that are going on, calendar events. Um, don't forget, though, this part of the program, this is when we do progress reports, how are you coming along with your goals? Does anybody need some help with their goals? Is everybody doing their spiritual goals? This is where you remind them. Um, do a short lesson. Um, if you can have the youth do this, that's great. All it needs to be is a spiritual thought, about five minutes, where, again, we're, we're mirroring these types of things a lot from some of these other programs, like Boy Scouts. Um, you don't want these to be too long. You'll lose their attention. Activity usually lasts maybe 20 minutes. Sometimes this may be all they do. Um, it has to be. It has to last long enough to keep their attention. It can be a game just for fun, um, and it should focus on whatever you're learning. And maybe it ends up being 40 minutes. Depends on your age group. That's fine. So maybe this is where you spend, you know, 40 minutes doing soap making or something. Power saving mode turned on. So, um, all right. Um, and sometimes this is, might be the first thing. If it's, if it's getting to be late fall and you're doing an outside activity, you might need to do the activity first just so because it's getting dark. That's okay. We can be flexible with, with those sorts of things. Um, so one of the things we want to make sure that happens, though, when you're doing the activity is that the kids are intermingling more. 
I know this isn't a, a, a problem with every single group and all the independents or whatever in fundamentalism, but it is a challenge with um, certain portions of AUB. And so what we're trying to encourage you to do is if they're breaking up into groups, if they're going to do teams, is to mix them up a little bit. So that we've got a lot of shy kids in fundamentalism. And what happens is the shy kids stick with their friends and this other group of shy kids stick with their friends and never the twain do they meet. They're cousins and, and you know they're related in three different ways, but they're too shy to talk to each other except for at family functions. And so we just want to break them up. If you have a team of five and a team of five, take two from here and swap them. Do that sort of thing. But we want to encourage them to make new friends and to reach out. That's one of the big things. If you're going to be a leader, you can't be shy. You can't be hiding in the corner. Maybe you can be a good home leader in your home and, and not be shy around your family. But to reach out beyond that, you've got to have the skill to be able to not be shy. I used to be painfully shy when I was a kid. I've, I've now performed in front of thousands of people. I public speak. I've done lots of things like that. I'm not shy at all anymore. Anybody who tells you I'm far from shy, um, it's a weakness and it's not something that's just part of your personality. Studies have actually shown that shyness is influenced more by your mom and dad than anything else and it's not very genetically inclined. There's not a high con genetic correlation. It's more a behavior that's learned from your family. So let's teach them to do better. Um, if Christ was shy, where would be, we be at now? We'd be in a world of hurt. If Joseph Smith was shy, we'd be in a world of hurt. He was, by the way, but he overcame it. And that was part of his growing experience. But he not, wasn't anywhere near shy a lot of our kids. <laughs> so that's something we want to overcome. And part of that's just going to be getting them to mix around with other kids more. We encourage you to do that sort of thing. Also, it, it, as part of the opening exercise, you can do a spotlight or praise. Um, we don't want this to be a typical spotlight where you say, this person grew up in a family of five, and they have two older brothers, and they're really good at chain mail. What we want the spotlight to be is something like, this is something they've accomplished. Last month, they did a really good job in crafts. This guy carved chain out of wood, and it's like this long, and it's got 14 links, and he carved it out of one piece of wood. Um, we had that showcased at one of our combined meetings um, just the other night. It's really impressive. It's awesome. That's what we want to point out, something that they've accomplished or done that would, that would be exciting for them to share with somebody else, even if they're shy. That particular kid, for instance, was too shy to show up to the meeting because he was being spotlighted. So, um, but now everybody knows that he did this cool thing, and he'll get, he'll get, um, he'll get acknowledgement from his peers that way. So... Um, Okay, so after the activity, instruction or application of what you're doing. For instance, your project might be tying knots, um, so that's what you focus on. Um, your activity might be having fun and doing a game about learning certain knots. Your, the application might be actually working on a project where you're tying knots. Um, and then afterwards, at the end, this is where the adult will do a lesson or inspiration, maybe a short story, what did they learn today, how can they apply it in real life. Sometimes those are prepared in the manual. Um, and those only need to be about five minutes. It's, especially with the younger kids, it's good to teach them. We want to teach them. Their attention spans are a little bit short, so make the lessons short. This is not Sunday school. It's not priesthood. It's not girls' class. You don't have an hour to teach a lesson. We just want short spiritual thoughts. And those short spiritual thoughts and lessons of inspiration can come from the manual. If you look at your goal handbook right here, and you go to the very, very end of it, there are like five pages or something of inspirational quotes, one after another after another. Hundreds of quotes that, that are on leadership principles um, that cover a wide variety of subjects. If you want to do an inspirational thought, you can just pull from that. It doesn't have to be something that you have to spend a lot of time preparing. We gave you something to cheat with. So there you go. All right, then summary, closing prayer. Nothing needs explanation there. Um, I just want to focus again that these small group meetings... We want to be flexible in some ways. We want to be able to have kids accomplishing different goals, different times. Um, you, can, you can have an expert come in one week. You can have an expert come in three weeks. It doesn't matter. We want that flexibility. But we do want to develop a culture where the kids know what to expect when they go to meeting. We don't want you ad-libbing every single week because what inevitably happens when you just kind of go off the cuff is you'll start developing your own way of doing things and you'll forget things that are part of the program. You'll stop doing the creeds, or you'll stop doing a spiritual thought, or stop doing inspirational thoughts and teaching your kids how to become leaders and, and empowering, thing, empowering them. And so um, we want to be a little bit rigid as to following that group meeting. 
Um, you've got a sheet available to you that outlines all the stuff that I've just talked about so that you can follow that, and uh, hopefully that will be a great help. Done.